that right there is a Huntsman Spider. It's not even fully grown yet. They're quite common. These guys like to hide. Sometimes they can be found inside of your helmet. Just one of the few things that we need to endure while we're camping here in Australia. Thank goodness they're not very harmful. The harmful ones, like the funnel web spider, they live in the ground, usually under your house. <laughs> so they're still around somewhere. Anyway, so you're keen on going motorcycle camping solo. You've had experience with friends, you love it, you love exploring, you love the adventure, but there's something holding you back. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's... Oh, let's face it, it's, it's fear. <laughs> Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you my tips that I wish I had for myself when I went out my first moto camp because I did all the things wrong. So that by the end of this video, you will be mentally prepped for your lone adventure into the wilderness. But before we get into it, film your adventure on your motorcycle. I do this using the Insta360 X3 and the Ace Pro. They're the perfect combo for capturing an entire ride on your journey to your campsite. It records in a 360 degree bubble and you can pick and choose later in post which angle you prefer to use. You have so many angles to choose from, from any position on your motorcycle. And for that sweet POV angle, I use the Insta360 Ace Pro with the ND filters and the mic adapter as well. And if you don't have any mounting hardware, today is your lucky day because with every Insta360 X3 purchase, you will receive the Moto Bundle Kit for free. And then that's it, you're ready to go. You're ready to mount it up to your bike and just go absolutely crazy with capturing your footage. And you'll receive a free battery with every Ace Pro purchase using my affiliate link in the description below. Now I do receive a small kickback with every purchase made at no extra cost to you. So it helps everybody. I help you, you help me. Thank you so much Insta360 for sponsoring this video. Let's get into these tips. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you guys all froth on camping with friends and stuff like that. Now, one of the benefits with camping with friends is yeah, you have the companionship with someone. If you drop your bike and get a hand to pick it back up, if you injure yourself, they can find help and you can share equipment. Now, when you're solo, you have none of that. It's all up to you. You need to make your own decisions. You need to pack all the gear and make sure that you're covered because if you have no matches, you gotta make your own fire somehow. Each time before I leave, I prepare myself mentally for things to go wrong. When you allow yourself to be open to any issues that you might come across, it doesn't seem as stressful when it does happen. You've prepared for it. And trust me, things will go wrong. But when you go in with the clarity that Yes, I've allowed time for this. I've allowed myself to accept that this is going to happen. Then it becomes far less stressful and you can just get on with your, with your job. So mental preparedness for when things go wrong. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a good one. Tell someone where you're going. Share them your coordinates, your GPS location, or the name of the campsite. If you have phone reception, what time you're gonna be leaving, what time you're gonna be back. And when you get there, if you do have service, to let them know that you're there and that you're okay and that everything's all good. They'd be happy to hear it and it's a peace of mind for you. Have a first aid kit with you. What also brings peace of mind for me is having a satellite phone on me all the time. Some areas you might have reception at your campsite, but the journey you might run out of reception, you might drop out. And if something happens that's quite urgent and you pull over and you have no reception, you're gonna be pretty stranded. So having a satellite phone is just that extra, again, peace of mind that you can be in contact with anybody at any time. All these little things just help you enjoy the experience without stressing so much that things might go wrong and you're not being prepared for it. And of course, bike prep. You might be taking a few more things now that you didn't have to before because your mates used to take it. So the bike might feel a little bit different. Load it up as you would and then go for a ride, hit some trails, just practice a little bit in your local area. Get a feel for it. And then that brings your confidence for when you're out in the middle of nowhere by yourself riding trails. When should you go camping for your first time solo? Now I like to go during the week where there's less people. I try to avoid people as much as possible. I want to be away from the people. For your first time solo, I'd highly recommend going camping during the spring, summer or autumn days. The days are longer and the air is warmer. You're gonna have a much more enjoyable time. When I went for my first time, I went damn smack bang in the middle of winter and I had about six hours of daylight. It was pitch black by quarter past five at night. I wasn't prepared for that. So take note of your sunrise and sunset times as well, and then plan accordingly. How long is it gonna take you to get to the campsite? Will you have enough time to set up and enjoy yourself before the sun goes down? Because once the sun goes down, you're pretty secluded and you know, things can get a bit creepy. <laughs> We'll get onto that. Take note of the temperature for both the days or as many days as you're going. Always keep your eye on the temperature. The first time I went, it was pretty cold. 
And when it's colder, you need to take more gear. You need to make sure you're warm. Um, I got pretty cold during the night. It kept waking me up. I wasn't super comfortable. I wish I went during the warmer or longer days. For your first time, try to go when the sun's out, when there's no rain, because when it rains and it's cold, it's hard to warm up. It's hard to light a fire because everything's wet. So keep your eye on the weather. Try to go when it's sunny. And even look at the moon phase. When you go out on a full moon, you can see everything at night still. You have a nice soft glow and it doesn't feel so overwhelming. You're not just saturated in darkness. When I went for my first time, it was pitch black. There was no moon. I was in this gully with no phone reception. It was freezing cold. It was pitch black at quarter past five and I had no entertainment. I had nothing. I didn't bring a book. I didn't bring anything. So I just sat there with my thoughts and I freaked the hell out. <laughs> Great to wake up alive. It's just funny, hey, like what your mind does when you're by yourself in the dark, in the middle of bush. Maybe I shouldn't have so much just gone completely out of reception and with nobody around at all. It would have been nice just having at least reception so I can just call someone if I wanted to or something. I just felt really like isolated and like I freaked out a little bit. <laughs> I mean, like, it just got creepy. I'm not used to it, it's my first time. So to avoid that, yeah. Just go when there's a full moon and get yourself settled in to your surroundings. Where should you go camping for your first time solo? You can either go to a paid camping site where it's more comfortable, there's amenities like toilets, barbecues, there's drinking water, you have a reserved space that no one is gonna pinch, but there are most likely going to be more people there. Or you can go wild camping, which is more adventurous, more immersive, way more private, with less chance of people, but you're completely isolated and you have to fend for yourself on all accounts. If you're either going to a paid camping site or a wild camping site, go to a site that you've been to before, just so that you're familiar with it. I didn't do that, I went to a completely different location. I've never been there before. I just chose a spot and said, yeah, I wanna go there. I just felt uneasy the whole time. I felt a bit creeped out, I felt weird, I felt lonely. It is strange, if you know Kinga, on her bike. I went camping with her a few years ago and she said that exact same thing. The first time is weird. Oh, that's what I was gonna ask. I, I'd camp, I like camping, I like camping with people. I need to go out for a solo trip. But, uh, you know, I feel nervous about it. I feel pretty uncomfortable. No, um, don't, feel, don't feel nervous. I, don't, I think when you know, when going by yourself, camping, don't know, we're thinking, just pack up and go and then. We, it's weird the first night. I swear, like, <laughs> I was going my first night on my on the, uh, trip around Australia in 2012. <sighs> Set up my tent. But us, I, I camped like, this is like free camping, but they were like, you know, people around, like Grey Normans and people in caravans and all. So I felt, okay, I'm by myself, but I'm not by myself. Yeah, yeah, a little bit safe. So and then I set up my tent and I'd lay down and I was like, oh my God, I've never camped by myself. Like, this is so strange. And I like, got out, like, okay, I'm going to go and talk to people. So maybe that's the thing. Ah, go yeah, sure. And, you know, wiki camps or like, you know, there's so many in the national parks, go to the campground where there are people. So maybe as a starter, that's a good thing. Sure. Just don't go into the wild by yourself. Uh, yeah, like the full on wild, yeah. Yeah, and then you get used to it and then you just, you will eventually go to the wild by yourself. Go somewhere with phone reception. My location didn't have phone reception. I didn't even have a satellite phone at this point. So I was completely isolated. If anything went wrong, I had no way to contact anybody. And it was a damn hike to get any phone reception. And do some research on the land, on the area. Learn what predators are living there. Learn what insects or reptiles or whatever. Just so you're not caught by surprise when you see something lurking around your campsite. The last camping trip, there are a whole bunch of bees. I didn't do my research. When I looked up in the forums, people were just like, yes, there are hives everywhere. There are lots and lots of bees. I didn't prepare for that. Luckily, I just had some insect repellent and I had some citronella candles on me as well, which is harmless to bees, but it just deters them. They were just after the water. There's one night I was out there and I just heard this grunting sound. I thought there were all these wild pigs around me. It turns out that the koalas made a ridiculously creepy grunting sound. Same as possums. Possums scream and make weird noises and they only come out at night as well. So those little things just freak you out. And it's until you get used to these sounds that animals make, that's when you can start relaxing and just being like, oh. That's a koala. Oh, that's a possum. Oh, but predators and insects and reptiles and everything aside, one of the most things I'm terrified of are people, are humans, which is quite sad. If you're like this as well, what I can suggest is having some kind of deterrent. I have this torch, it shines quite bright. It's like the sun, but it does a strobe as well. And that is a great deterrent. It helps me just know that I've, I've got something. I'm just gonna shine this in their face. I don't know what my plan of attack is after that. Obviously just hop on the bike and just burn out of there. 
but the people thing is what freaks me out the most. One way to get over this fear is to remember that if you're in your tent and it's pitch black outside, no one knows how many people you got in the tent. There could be two massive dudes in there, full jacked up, ready to, you know, take you on. And then they'd probably see that tent and be like, oh, there's someone there and maybe that would even scare them as well. I don't like taking weapons. I have a knife, obviously, because I use, I use you, gotta get, you need a knife. You need a knife to go camping. But in terms of uh, firearms and stuff like that, I'm, I'm not into them. Even if it's pepper spray or something like that, if you're feeling that unsafe. What to expect when the sun goes down? Now in this section, I'm not gonna try to deter you from going camping, but more to prepare you so that when you're out in the field and you do have some creepy thoughts or you think you're hearing things and stuff like that, you can just refer back to this video and say, ah, Rob said this will happen and this is what he recommends to overcome it. So as soon as the sun goes down, everything changes. The whole area, your life changes. Your senses heighten. Your sense of smell, your hearing, your sight, everything just goes through the roof. And I sort of enjoy that. It's like your body is being used to its full potential. You will hear things that you've unconsciously heard before, only this time it sounds threatening. Every single scary movie that you've seen will pop into your head. You will see things that aren't there. Your thoughts will race and this can lead to panic. Now, of course, all these senses and all these, these feelings and everything are just a way that our brain preparing us for the worst, basically, which is a good thing but we need to learn how to control that so that we can just enjoy the experience of being in nature and at night in the middle of the forest by itself. Familiarize yourself with your surroundings during the day. Look at things, look at objects that might look a bit strange because at night, you're gonna be sitting there going, what the hell is that? You know, and it's probably just a stump or something that you hadn't seen before with a weird branch behind it. Just try to take note of all the things that might freak you out later at night. Bring something to do, a book, a journal, a crossword, a Nintendo Switch, which is what I do every now and then. I've even online gamed with my mates at night camping. It's, it's, a, it's great, just experiment, just try different things, you know. The thing I like to do the most though is watch movies. So I download a movie onto my phone and I like to sit in my tent all cozied up, it might be raining outside. It's actually the best when it's raining and just watch an awesome movie and you'll just fall asleep. Anything to get your mind off disastrous or haunting thoughts that will most likely never happen and that take away from you enjoying your camping experience. Call someone, have a chat. I've called my mum heaps of times, catch up with family, you know, and just, just have a yarn. Now what I like to do once I've rocked up to my campsite, I've set everything up, I like to take about 15 minutes and just sit in nature and just close my eyes and consciously listen to your surroundings in as much detail as possible. Not only will this mentally prepare you for when the sun goes down, but it'll help your brain tune into the alpha or theta wave state, which close matches the frequency of the earth, which is 7.83 Hertz. Doing this has proven to alleviate stress, anxiety, and helps boost relaxation and general well-being. There are a whole bunch of findings on the topic that are all scientifically proven. So have a Google, have a research if you're into that kind of thing, but this does help. One of the greatest things about solo camping is being curious of the area that you're going out to, especially when you're by yourself, it's a whole different vibe. But when you finish the first night, every night after that becomes a lot easier. I'm up to my 32nd night camping solo and I just love it. It gets better and better and better. You build up on your gear, you know what you're doing, you have your routine. Just get the first one out of the way and you're, you're set to go. So what are you waiting for? Get out there, go exploring, go be curious and Godspeed. I'll see you in the next vid. Peace.